Hello everyone and welcome to Camping Willany. Today we're going to be talking about lighting up your campsite featuring Marco the Cat. This episode is brought to you by me, Camping Willany. Help me create great content by supporting this podcast by buying me a cup of coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash campinglenny. Thanks for your support. Lighting up your campsite is very, very important, especially for health and safety. The reason why I'm saying health and safety is without a proper lighting, you can trip, fall, hurt yourself while you're walking, let's say, to the bathroom, for example, or trying to get something in your car or getting to your tent. Especially you're trying to change. It's kind of hard to change in the middle of the night without lighting. So when I was doing research on this, uh, oh, sorry, I just need to give the marker a little kiss. Hey, you don't want to be with me that anymore? Okay. Okay, sorry about that. I was saying that when I was doing research on this uh, on this topic, and uh, I was getting a lot of weird, um, yeah, I was getting a lot of weird answers actually, um, items to help light up your campsite, and some of them was just bafflingly insane. That uh, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna give you guys my tips regarding lighting up your campsite, what I use and what's considered normal for camping. Okay, so we'll start with my list and we'll go through the stuff that I've seen and you'll just be dumbfounded. <laughs> so first of all is uh, to, to do proper lighting, especially if you're a own personal uh, lighting device, is your headlamp. Get a headlamp. For me, headlamp is great um, because uh, you can actually attach it in your head. You can put a wrap around your head. You can walk around. You will have free. Hand, you'll have your hands free to do anything you want, like eating, for example, or or um, preparing food or putting uh, your tent together, especially in the middle of the night, for example. You'll have you'll have your hands free and you still have light, especially when you move your move your head around. So that's a, a good that's a good a, uh, option as well. Um, I do requ I do recommend getting a battery version of the headlamp rather than the rechargeable one. The reason why is the rechargeable one is is great. But the problem is if you don't have a way to recharge your headlamp, you're 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 um, you're kind of screwed. Right. So just you just have to you have to um, prepare yourself to, to charge your headlamp. If you have a battery version of your headlamp, you just have to replace the battery if you need it. So you don't have to worry about um, uh, replacing. Uh, you don't have to worry about recharging your batteries. You just replace your uh, your, your batteries. So that's one. The next one is lanterns, rechargeable ones. Sorry, that's Marco. <laughs> rechargeable one or battery powered one. Um, because the units are a lot bigger, depending on your headlamp, I do carry a rechargeable head, uh, rechargeable lanterns. I have three of them. Uh, I have the comb. I have a woods uh, lantern one. Uh, it lasts for a long time. That's why I don't mind using a rechargeable one. I charge it before I head out. I'm good for uh, three to four days um, using it, and I'm good to go. I I put two outside and one inside the tent so if i'm changing or anything like that or i'm just getting ready to settle in for the night i'll turn on the one the inside uh for the outside one i usually keep in low light um uh, until it dies for example or or just before i go to bed um just to keep the uh, the area lit up so it's for again for health and safety and uh and so you won't trip when you go anywhere so i got like fur over me right now um so that's number two, uh, rechargeable lanterns or or battery powered one, or even the propane ones are actually pretty good as well too. I have a propane lantern that I use once in a while. Um, the good thing about that one is it's variable, so you can make it brighter or 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 dimmer. Uh, the only problem is uh, you are using propane, and uh, there are items in the inside that propane lamp that you do need to replace once in a while. Um, just to, uh, so it's almost like a battery pack, but, uh, it is a lot bigger. It is, uh, the issue, the biggest issue with that is you do get, um, bugs flying in your, um, uh, lantern, your propane lantern. So just be aware that you have to clean it every, uh, every night or something or every morning. So just be aware of that one. The next one that I do recommend is using is a rope light or, or, uh, or rope or, yeah, rope lights or copper rope lights that you see during Christmas or anything like that. Um, I've seen people using them. I used them once 
to um, illuminate the um, the surrounding area. Uh, just again, it's a very low light. It's not bright at all, but it gives you enough light that uh, gives you enough ambient light to uh, to illuminate the site. Plus, it does it's not bright enough that it, you, you'll bother your your neighbors. Right. So it's, it's just a nice ambient light. It's great. It's uh, if you get if you can get a small one. Perfect. If you have a big one, you just have to figure out how to transport them. Get the one that's battery pack one or the battery powered one, not the the, the plug in ones. Because, again, if you have plug in ones, you, you need to get a, um, a plug in site. So just be aware that um, with that solution. Uh, the other one, uh, the number four item that I do want to talk about and uh, and 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 put it out there is the um, is the uh, they call it the landscape solar light. The reason why I'm putting that in the list is it's pretty cool. Um, if you get the one or two of them, you can actually put them um, where your where your uh, your site is. If you're walking from, let's say, uh, to the bathroom back to your site, it's pitch dark. You want some type of light to tell you, hey, I'm over here. This is where my site is. So at least you know where to go. Right. And also, if you have another one, you can actually put it where the where your tent is, where your tent door is. So you don't have to keep searching it. Um, that's also also a good thing to have as well, too, is if you have pegs uh, all over your site, if you put that where the light where your pegs are, at least, you know, where not to trip. You know where it's located. I also have done um, uh, done as well too as use um, uh, glow sticks, the one you get from the dollar store or anything like that. Something simple, something something uh, something cheap. You can hang it where your pegs are. At least you know where it is. That's another good uh, good idea. Uh, a good uh, good solution. Uh, number five is campfire or candles. I know it's very obvious. If you have a big enough fire, it will illuminate the whole site, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but here's the thing, though: you do need to keep feeding it to keep going. Um, candles are great for a small area, but not recommended inside a tent. That's a very bad idea. Um, but um, if you have those kind, of, it's great for emergency. It's great for uh, for last minute uh, uh, light that you need because, uh, for example, if you are in the middle of uh, setting up and you, your battery died or something, you can actually have uh, a, a can candle just to to get you running again, for example, right? So um, a few things. If you are planning to get any of the, uh, let's say, headlamps, lanterns, or even rope light, you need to find a way to charge them or replace the battery. Um, like I mentioned before, I prefer using battery pack for the headlamps because it's easy to replace. You don't have to charge it. If my lanterns die on me while camping, I have to charge it. I just I can I can just charge it when I'm driving or find a plug to, char to charge it into. So it's not a big deal. Uh, but I do want to have at least one item that can be replaced with batteries. So if something goes wrong with it or something died, I can just replace the battery. I'm good to go. So that's uh, that's one item that I have to make sure that uh, um, I have one item that's considered battery replaceable instead of chargeable one. OK, uh, the next solution that I do, the next comment that I do want to 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 tell you guys is uh, avoid motion activated lights. That's one of the items that I saw when I was doing this research. Uh, motion activate lights is a bad idea, like incredibly incredibly bad idea reason why i'm saying there's a bad idea is uh let's say you have it up and running okay you're walking by the light turns on oh cool I, at least you know where you're going that's great what happens if you're sleeping if you're sleeping and uh uh your neighbor raccoon your your beautiful raccoons or deer or, or any type of animals trigger that light your your entire uh that light will turn on and trust me, if you have um, squirrels or anything like that, or chipmunks or raccoons running around in the middle of the night, that thing will keep going on and off, on and off all night. And let's just say your neighbors are not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy because your neighbors are complaining that your light keeps turning on and off. So avoid using motion activated lights. OK, what, the other thing that you have to avoid using as well this, uh, is floodlights. I've seen people using floodlights, industrial strength floodlights, the one that you use when you're doing um, uh, construction. 
I've seen people using them and they are a bad idea. The reason why I'm saying it's a bad idea is you that thing will flood the whole site. The goal for you going camping is to be with nature. To see the stars. To experience what's around you. If you have a floodlight illuminating your sight, making everything bright, and that brightness leaks over to your neighbors and it ruins a, f a feel of being outdoors it's just a bad idea it's plus on top of that too if you don't have a powered site if you have a floodlight it's, there's no way for you to plug it in you can plug in a tree and see what happens but floodlights bad idea not recommending not a good idea not a good good idea especially if you want to be good with your neighbors or if you want to get to know your neighbors okay the other one, as well, too, I mentioned before, is having anything combustible inside your tent as your light source. Bad idea. Um, your tent can, it's literally, a f it can burn, right? And if you get trapped inside, that's it. So I avoid using candles in the middle of the night. Uh, sorry, inside your tent. Outside your tent, you're fine. But inside your tent, don't, not a good idea. Okay. Um, also, find a, the other one, as well, too, is like a, uh, if you're having anything that's um Anything that's battery powered or in any light source, make sure it is adjustable. Everything from low settings to mid to high or extreme high or whatever. Make sure that uh, your light is adjustable. Reason why is um, at night, your eyes are very, very good about adjusting from low light to bright light. Uh, it does take a while to adjust. It's called night vision. You have, in, you have your... You have your own natural night vision in your eyes because your eye, your iris will open up. More light will come in. You can see it properly at night. So you don't you want to make sure that your light source is dimmable. So when you're walking around, you don't have this fl uh, bright lights walking. At least uh, when you're walking, at least it's it's low enough that it doesn't ruin anybody's uh, night vision. Also, make sure that your light actually has a, a red function, a red light function. Red light is actually very, very nice to have, especially you're walking because, you, again, like I mentioned, your uh, your 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 natural um, low light um, uh, night vision works better if it's red light, so it doesn't bother other people. So your eyes will just way way better. So uh, having adjustable light is adjustable in your light settings is good to have. I have it in all my um, my light source. Everything is adjustable. And I do have a red light as well to all my lights, including my lamps. My headlamps has a red light as well, too. And I use it. I use it when I'm walking to the bathroom, for example, or if I need to walk around uh, the campsite and then I don't want to disturb anybody. I use the red light. Okay. Um, so the biggest thing that uh, you might be asking is uh, rechargeable versus battery. I have both, like I mentioned. Uh, my headlamp is battery powered. My lamps are sorry. My 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 lanterns are rechargeable. Reason why I have both is, like I mentioned, the headlamp is my primary light source. Anywhere I go, I have that. If my battery died, I just replace immediately. I don't have to worry about recharging. Regarding my lamps, I make sure that my lamps can hold its charge for three to four days before I charge it. Typically, my camp uh, is three, three days, two nights, or four nights, five days. Right. So uh, I, my lamp is good enough to to run for all that and not worrying about it to die. Right. If I do need to um, to charge them, I can charge them pretty easily in the car when I'm driving or I bring it to the bathroom because typically they actually have in um, uh, a plug in to uh, to charge your um, your uh, your items. But it's not very advisable people because it can walk. So but um, you do have both. Uh the, the having a battery it's great because if it dies you can just replace them rechargeable you have to find a way to charge them if you do have a powered site charging your lights is super easy just plug into your extension cord you're good to go but if you are doing a non-powered site you do have to be very self-conscious regarding how you're going to charge your lights or your batteries so so you just keep that in mind so that is my lighting up your campsite episode it's a very broad 
it's not very generic. It's broad and generic. The reason why I'm making it broad and generic because it's up to you how you want to light up your your campsite. The only the only advice I have is be cautious regarding your lighting solution. Be friendly. Have your solution be friendly, friendly to your neighbors, friendly to your people surrounding you. Don't go overboard because again, you want to be part of nature. You want to see the stars while you're walking you want to see the stars while you're just relaxing in your fire uh just don't go overboard be gentle be practical on your lighting solution thanks guys thanks for listening if you like what you're hearing consider supporting this podcast by buying me a cup of coffee link in the description you can also visit campingwithlearning.com there you can find other episodes and links that can help you on your next camping adventures thanks again